you're saying he needs to get the bigger picture to understand what's going on. If he goes into Iraq and takes the oil, that's a kind of a thuggish um, mentality. America has the power to do these things, but it will not bring the results that America desires. Bush and the neocons, when they went into Iraq, I warned President Bush that what you are doing and the way you are doing it, you will increase terrorism, you will not diminish it. It proved my words to him, proved correct. And I warned him that the coalition would fall apart from him and he would ultimately have to go it alone. Now here is our president. Now I'm talking about Barack Obama because the job that President Bush started was not finished. So in comes Obama and, in, and in, when he was campaigning, he was a new and fresh and beautiful idea. But when he gets into office, he becomes the extension of the policies of the neoconservatives. They surrounded Bush. They surrounded Barack Obama. And now, just uh, two weeks ago in Washington, there was all of these people who are behind the drones. And they were saying that in these drones that go out to kill people that America feels are a threat to their policies, none of that happens without Barack Obama's signature. So you took a man we gave you the best that we had, but you took him, you gave him the peace prize, and then the neocons and the, that shadow government begins to guide the policies of America. And now here's what we have. Now, I, I'm going to come back to Mr. Trump in a minute. Hillary Clinton was the biggest advocate for the destruction of Libya and Muammar Gaddafi. Gaddafi was my friend. I know him as a revolutionary. He was against America's foreign policy objectives and he stood out. That man died, but he led his country. They had no debt. There's no country on earth that doesn't have debt, but Libya didn't have debt. Libya gave some of the oil money back to all the citizens. Libya armed the whole country and had depots where if anything happened, they could go and get arms. A man who is a despot does not arm his people that they can be manipulated to come against him. But the moment he gave up his weapons of mass destruction to come in out of the cold, who came to Libya? It was Richard Pearl. And where did he go? He went directly to Benghazi because it was from Benghazi that uh, Gaddafi overthrew the king. He's from uh, that area of the world. So now they never did like Gaddafi. So they started stimulating the upset, the unrest, the dissatisfaction. And I don't care how good any leader is, there's always dissatisfaction in every house. And our government has gone into nations with money from our Congress to stimulate the dissatisfied and then arm them against a government that is their government. That's what America did in Libya. That's what they're doing in Syria. And the blowback now is they have created 
a refugee crisis that is destabilizing the countries in Europe. So when Mr. Uh, Trump said, um, we can't uh, allow these Muslims refugees into America. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. We don't have the systems in place on the ground to collect the information to vet. That would be the concern. Yes, I think that's the challenge we're all talking about, is that <clears throat> we can only query against that which we have collected. You can't account for what you don't know, and that goes to the intelligence deficit that I think is uh, uh, embedded in your question. <clears throat> we may have somebody who comes to us and is simply not on our radar for any discernible reason. And there may also be the possibility that somebody decides to do something bad after they've been admitted through the process. Now, a lot of people were upset with him, but I know, um, sir, that the hatred for America in the Muslim world is building, as we told Mr. Bush, no Muslim leader could call for jihad and have it stick. No Muslim leader had the power to unite the whole Muslim world. I said, but America's policies will unite those people against the West, and it is happening. So in this way, Mr. Trump, I think, is wise to vet anyone coming from that area into America because the hatred for America is in the streets now. So if those people are refugees and America feels I got to let 10,000 of them in because America created the problem. Now, if you let them in and you don't vet them carefully, you might be letting in your own destruction. I'll close that, uh, Mr. Jones, with scripture. In the book of Revelations, it talks about Babylon falling. Ancient Babylon we know, but there's a mystery Babylon that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says represents America and her dominance in the world. Now here we have Babylon falling. Mr. Trump says, I want to make America great again. The American people know that something is wrong because the country is not what it once was, doesn't have the influence that it once had, and even though militarily it is the strongest nation on the earth, it's $19 trillion in debt. It can never pay that debt. So 57% of the budget goes to produce more and more weapons because that's the only way America can threaten China, who America has borrowed trillion of dollars from. If China calls the debt, what happens to America and the dollar? The dollar is weak, as you know, and it started with the loss of the congressional mandate in the Constitution to mint the money. There's so much conspiracy that we could be here all day, but I'll close with this, sir. Babylon is fallen, it says, and has become a habitation of devils and a hole for every a uh, wicked uh, spirit and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. My teacher said, Babylon is America and the devil means that all of us are in rebellion against the divine laws of God. Whatever God said thou shalt not do in America, 
you're free to do it. So whether we like the appellation devil or not, we are in rebellion against God. And look at the cage of every foul, unclean, and hateful bird. Those are the people, he said, that are flying out of the Middle East now, coming to America for refuge. But they're filled with hate of this country. So if Mr. Trump and the government is wise, you vet the people that are coming in. Wow, well that's my next point, is it's clearly, if you read the PNAC plan you brought up, they go devastate the Middle East, they destroy every infrastructure building up Africa, uh, Libya, they admit they want a failed state, commit that war crime, wreck it, and then they bring in groups from war-torn Syria that they know a good percentage of are going to attack. Then when they attack, they launch an even bigger class of civilizations and invade other countries, just like Saudi Arabia is involved in 9-11 with our government, they attack Iraq, nothing to do with it. And now they're saying Assad, it's his fault for ISIS when Hillary Clinton helped create it. They use the political and geopolitical ignorance, the American people, to get away with this when the main target is to finally bring down the United States. Not that America was ever perfect, but it's been a battleground for good and evil, both the best and worst, to decide that. And now they want to use the United States to build the corporate world government, in my view, collapse America finally down, and then have the world government rise up out of that and out of the ashes of the big world war that's coming. You know, the greatest example of that is Russia, certainly not perfect. But you go to Russia, talk to folks that go there, people just like us, all they want is freedom, all they want is to love their kids. And our same government, both Republican Democrats, push war with Russia, uh, the same thing. And then again, Donald Trump says, I don't want war with Russia. He says some good things, but then he says, go to Iraq and take the oil. I think what I'm getting at is, and I think you sense this, you said this when we met earlier for 20 minutes before we talked in here, is that we are at that crossroads. Big things are about to happen. And the mainstream media continues to distort what I'm saying, what you're saying, what Donald Trump's saying, so many others. And what we do have in difference is much smaller than what we have in common. It's really important for those of us that are outside the collapsing system to talk to each other because if you look at what the establishment's doing, it's trying to get us to fight with each other so there's no opposition when they finally collapse the country. Uh, can you specifically, though, speak to, I mean, there's so many issues I want to get to with you about where you think the future of this country is going if we wake up, if we transcend this conditioning, versus where we're going if we continue to follow the plan uh, that these social engineers have for America. America has potential. The people of every ethnic and racial group live in America. The whole world lives here. If America could become what Christ taught, or what Muhammad taught, or what Moses and the Israelite prophets taught, America could be the basis of the kingdom of God. That's the ultimate positive aim of those who want to see America survive. But you know, I'm, I'm really concerned because Mr. Trump has hit on some very negative things with Mrs. Clinton and her husband. And I think it's dangerous for the future of politics and for the future of America when we become uncivil in our discourse. I was with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad one day, and prior to that I was with Brother Malcolm, and we were at Boston University, and Malcolm was addressing a room full of about 500 scholars. And before he got there, 